Hello everybody and welcome to another update video. Um, my name is Martin, I'm an Inkscape developer developing features and fixes for everyday Inkscape users. Uh, welcome to another video where I tell you about some of the things that I've been doing this week on the Inkscape project. Um, but before we get into the details, uh, let's talk about the sponsors. Um, every week I thank all of the sponsors who um, really allow me to spend time on Inkscape. And this being the United States Thanksgiving, I want to give an extra special thank you to everybody. Um, all of the people who help me with uh, money, very important, but also all of the people who help me with just testing problems, giving me good ideas, feedback, um, you know, all of these little, little things that really build up to enabling my work. Um, I'm very privileged to be able to work on Inkscape and have all of your help in basically freeing up my time to write code. So thank you all so much. Um, okay, this week we, we're going to talk about Inkscape 1.2.2. Uh, estimated for delivery on December 5th, it's going to be a stable version of the Inkscape 1.2 ver uh, release. The idea is that we fixed a bunch of things in 1.2 and we want to release those before we start really pushing for 1.3. 1, 1 um, from feedback, the 1.2 release has been very stable. Um, there are a couple of things which I think people are going to benefit from. Uh, various like small fixes, but specific things. We've turned off the dithering in uh, Windows because it was causing significant slowdown. Um, sorry about that. We thought it would be a cool fe feature. It turns out that it slowed Inkscape down way too much. Uh, you can actually turn it off yourself if you like right now. You don't have to wait for the actual 1.2.2, but it's going to be turned off by de default in the new release. Uh, the things that I actually fixed, I fixed a, a JPEG orientation issue when you exported to PDF. Since the images that you embedded into your SVG would flip around depending upon what their internal or orientation was set to, um, that's been fixed. Uh, there was a problem when exporting to PNG that some, sometimes the permissions would be wrong. Um, you, they'd be set to read only. Um, that has been fixed. Um, also, as well as the 1.2.2 fix, I also got in some fixes for the Inkscape website. Uh, for those who don't, don't know, I'm also the website administrator for Inkscape.org. Um, I do all the programming. And um, so I wanted to fix some, some of the issues that had cropped up with the Mastodon. Uh, because of all of the recent activity with between Twitter and Mastodon, there's a lot more people who are filling in their Mastodon account into their Inkscape.org account. And I made the assumption that Mastodon.social was like the thing. Uh, that default is no longer really relevant because there are tens of thousands of Mastodon instances. Um, and I also had the username and domain name reversed. Um, those have all been fixed. Um, for extensions, I fixed the uh, clip art and extensions manager, especially in Windows, there was missing dependencies. And there was also warnings that cropped up from time to time. Um, I managed to figure out exactly what needed to be kind of isolated in order to remove those warnings and which of the dependencies were missing from, I think it was Win Windows. Sorry about that. Okay, so uh, for the past few weeks, we have been doing PDF work. And predominantly what I've been trying to do is make it so that when you open up a PDF in Inkscape, you have some control over what it tries to interpret for you and how accurate that rendering is going to be. Um, the This week has actually been uh, like pretty much a conclusion of some of the font work. So we now have a... Uh, three passes to figure out what font the PDF means and its data. Uh, the first pass is we, we ask the, the PDF itself what font and what font settings it thinks they are. Um, mostly that's just wrong. PDFs tend not to store all of the information necessary to pick a font from the system um, because PDFs are not editable. They're not intended to be editable. 
Um, but sometimes PDF uh, creators do actually store that information. So we'll go for that for the first pass. The second pass is we um, we interpret the font name and the font style. We stick that together and we essentially ask the system to think very carefully about whether these things together could make up a, a font with a particular style and set of settings. Um, and then if that fails, we then reinterpret the font family name and essentially aggressively go through the available styles lists and figure out what the settings might have been from that font family. Um, this is All of these passes are to figure out what font is actually in that uh, PDF. Um, but that isn't actually the conclusion. The, that is just to be able to show you a list of fonts that are available so that then you can choose in that list what you want Inkscape to do, right? And the options are, do you want us to render that to shapes like the Cairo importer? Do you want us to render that to text and just use whatever substitute uh, font is available? Or do you want us to delete the text and just not, not have it there at all, right? And so using this new dialogue with this new list of all the information, hopefully, you'll be able to make an informed decision about how you want Inkscape to interpret the PDF. Because if you remember from what I said last time, um, editing PDF files isn't just a case of like opening a file. Inkscape has to interpret what the information in that PDF file means to make it the, the best editing experience. Um, and hopefully this will make it easier to at least for you to understand as a user that there's more decisions here that you can possibly make to get what you intend to do with the pro with the with the file that you're trying to open you know whether you need it to be perfectly visually accurate or whether you need it to be you need to prioritize editing the actual text for example okay so that's about it i'd l we're getting very very close to to testing i fixed all of the builds uh, some of the font engine work that i'd done with poplar uh, required me to test Poplar against three different distinct versions of Poplar from the history and make sure that it can build for older systems, for medium systems, and for new systems. That means that the builds for Windows and Mac and Linux should be available now so that you can test them. Um, sorry about that. It's just the way in which I'm trying to hack the font system stuff. So it's, it's kind of more involved than a lot of other work that we do because it involves a lot of external systems. Um, but please do let me know if it's work, working for you. Uh, so let's get on to some, some of the things that happened in Inkscape that I didn't do. Uh, there's a lot of contributors to Inkscape and I'd like to hi highlight some of their work. Uh, first of all, Nathan Lee has been continuing his amazing work on the 1.2.2 release, uh, backporting things, testing things, Really nice work. Uh, various people have actually contributed translations. Um, this includes German, Japanese, Ukrainian, Spanish, Croatian, Hungarian. Uh, I love it when we see new translations because it really opens up Inkscape to being able to be used by people who are not native English speakers and speakers. Um, intern James uh, fixed a bug in the multi-page grid system. Um, small problem. Nice work, very quickly fixed. Mark fixed a problem with the FE morphology filter primitive. This is where you have a specific from filter and the uh, area that it allows to represent the results. Uh, it wasn't big enough. Um, Adil merged their refactoring Google Summer of Code project. Uh, a pretty big change in Inkscape's code code base to remove some old crufty code that was no, no longer necessary. Uh, it's really nice to see Google Summer of Code work making it into the Inkscape master branch. Um, Jonathan has been doing his uh, HGPL extension. He's been working for a couple of months, essentially re-implementing a lot of the um, HGPL work. Uh, this is, I think these are using cutting machines. I'm not entirely sure, uh, but it looks really exciting. I've actually reviewed his Python code. It's really, really nice thoroughly tested, tested more than a lot of other things. Um, so I'm hoping that that will be a really solid addition to Inkscape 1.3. Um, but if you use HGPL, this might be a good opportunity to test because uh, you can actually use these kinds of things uh, pretty independently. Okay. Um, 
thank you all so much for watching this video. Um, as I said, the 1.2.2 the release will hopefully be in December 5th. I'll be working on um, preparations for that, re that release. Uh, there'll probably be some work on making sure the website is ready. And uh, I'll obviously be continuing to do some P PDF work, but we'll see. We'll see how the, the, the whole mix goes in. Um, so, yeah, thank you all very, very much, and I'll see you all next week.